Et puis l'empereur avec Chalotin mourit. Depuis là, ça a une situation qui a développé dans le pays. Côté un petit point de monde qui a tout le Il y a un cob. Il y a un parler français. Il y a l'école. Il y a un pouvoir. Il y a tout le dans le pays. Et puis l'autre là, la majorité à deux. C'est mon adieu. En 1972, a young Haitian agronomist by the name of Jean Dominique decided to found the first independent Haitian radio station, Radio Haiti Inter, with the hope of accomplishing something that the elites of the country have been able to suppress since Haiti's first emperor, free information. He also took it a step further by broadcasting his shows and interviews in Creole, a language that is spoken by the masses, instead of French that is spoken by the ruling class. For the first time, the majority of the Haitian population had a voice. As a child, Dominique frequently accompanied his father on trips throughout the Haitian countryside, which led him to know and understand the lives and struggles of peasant farmers. Being an agronomist himself, Dominique understood the ploy of the peasant farmers and worked diligently to promote the rights of those people. He was soon arrested by the Duvalierist authorities and was banned from practicing as an agronomist upon his release. Instead, Dominique became a journalist, the fight roared on, and once again the peasant farmers were not forgotten. During the 1960s, Dominique also founded Haiti's first film club at the Institut Francais in Port-au-Prince, which he understood to be a way of subverting and resisting the political repression of the Duvalier dictatorship. In 1961, Dominique co-directed and narrated Haiti's first documentary film, Mare, J. Sui Bell, but, I Am Beautiful, an ironic film about Caribbean beauty pageants. Dominique remained a staunch supporter of Haitian cinema, and collaborated with Haitian filmmakers such as Rassol Labouchin. Throughout the 1970s, Jean Dominique used Radio Haiti to highlight aspects of Haitian culture rooted in its Creole-speaking majority, and repressed for almost two centuries by its French-speaking elite. Dominique and Radio Haiti also reported increasingly on events that would challenge the regime of Jean-Claude Duvalier, often strategically and indirectly to circumvent the regime's censorship laws. On November 28, 1980, shortly after Ronald Reagan won the U.S. presidential election, Duvalier cracked down on the independent press, human rights activists, and union leaders in Haiti. Duvalier's militia, the Tontons Makuts, ransacked and destroyed Radio Haiti's studios. Nearly all of Radio Haiti's journalists were arrested, some, including station manager Richard Brisson, were tortured. Most were released within days and then exiled. An order was issued for Jean Dominique to be killed on sight. Hearing this, Jean Dominique went into hiding, he spent two months in asylum at the Venezuelan embassy, before he fled to New York. On March 5, 1986, less than a month after Duvalier's ouster, Dominique and his now current wife which he married in New York, Montas returned to Haiti, and were greeted at the airport by nearly 60,000 people. That October, Radio Haiti reopened with funds raised by ordinary Haitian people, and the elite's Pese Suse system were once again at his sight. Throughout the years, Dominique continued to advocate for democratic participation, human rights, peasant rights, and for the removal of Duvalierist and Makoud elements from the government and the army. In the final years of his life, Dominique concentrated on issues of state corruption and criminal negligence by the private sector. He investigated Farvel Laboratories, a pharmaceutical company, for selling cough syrup contaminated with diethylene glycol that was responsible for the poisoning of 200 children. He also denounced the importation of medical-grade ethanol that was being sold as counterfeit clarin or high-proof undistilled sugar cane spirits, sickening and killing people who consumed it while undercutting the livelihood of Haiti's sugar planters and distillers. After surviving the Duvalier regime and the Cedrus coup regime, in the morning of the 3rd of April 2000, while entering his radio station, Radio Inter, Jean Dominique was shot four times in the chest and neck, he was pronounced dead at the scene, he was 69 at the time. The suspects were never found due to irregularities, and evidence tempering in the case. The prime suspect Danny Toussaint was never tried, instead he became a sitting senator and claimed diplomatic immunity from prosecution. Today we remember Jean Dominique, another slain soldier in the army in the fight for Haiti.
Jean Leopold Dominique, the voice of the Haitian people, and an enemy of the Pese Suse system. <laughs>